Hey everyone, thanks for visiting the AMD booth, and we're super glad to be here as part of UT Girl Day 2021. My name is Melissa Yang, and I'm a third year student studying electrical and computer engineering at the University of Texas at Austin. I'm also a co-op at AMD. Hi guys, my name is S.A. Igbru, and I'm a graduate of the University of Texas at Austin with a degree in electrical and computer engineering. I currently work for AMD as a power optimization engineer. In this video, we're going to be walking you guys through a PC build. We're going to be talking about and showing you guys the different components, as well as how they work together to make a working PC. So Melissa, have you built a PC before? Well, I haven't built a PC personally, but I recently helped a friend build one and that was really fun. What about you? So prior to working at AMD, I actually hadn't built any PCs before. However, I've been able to build a couple ever since I started working here, and I'm just so excited to share the process with you guys. Speaking of PCs, Melissa, what do we have circled here? Yeah, there's definitely a lot to take in at the moment, but don't worry, we'll go through it one at a time. So let's start with the CPU, otherwise known as a central processing unit, which is located in the center of our screen right now. You can think of this as the brain of the computer because this is the part that does all the heavyweight calculations and processing and also for the most part sends information and tasks to the rest of the PC. Now to the right of our CPU is the GPU which is short for the graphics processing unit. Now graphics gets its own processing unit because there's actually a lot of tasks that need to happen in parallel in order to get your images across the screen as fast and continuously as possible. It turns out that modern supercomputers are really interested in this ability to multitask, and they do a lot more than just play videos. Speaking of CPUs and GPUs, when you guys think about building a PC, you guys should check out AMD's Ryzen and Radeon lines. Alright, now back to the other parts. On our left here is the all-in-one water cooler, which is what we're going to use to keep our CPU from overheating and thermal throttling. Now, there are a lot of other models for CPU coolers out there, such as a fan, which can be cheaper and work just as great, but in this video, we're going to splurge a little. And to the right of the water cooler is our power supply unit. It's very simple. This is how we're going to get power to our PC. Right. And then we also have the fan, which helps with cooling in order to prevent overheating, like Melissa already mentioned. We also have the motherboard, which is the backbone of the computer. This controls everything that the system does, which is why we have major components on it, such as the CPU, the IO chip, and the RAM slot. Speaking of the RAM slots, you can see the RAM chips on the side, and this component actually deals with memory. With our RAM chips, when you lose power, you do lose whatever content is on there unlike hard drives and solid state drives that do not lose their content when you lose power. Now the NVMe that is already on the motherboard is an example of such an SSD. Before building your PC, you want to make sure you have certain tools such as screwdrivers, zip ties, as well as something to ground yourself just to make the process go by smoother. So now we're starting with the build. We can see here that the guy is currently installing the motherboard with the CPU and the SSD already installed but some key parts are still missing. So, Essay, when do you think is the right time to be placing all your components on the motherboard? Great question, Melissa. I definitely think you're at liberty to install these components on the motherboard either inside or outside of the case. It is all up to you. While installing these components, you have to be very careful, especially of the CPU pins, so that you do not damage any of them as that could result in a non-working PC. You might also want to install smaller components first in order to make this process easier, but it is totally up to you. Yeah, those are all definitely really great points. So we can see here that there are actually quite a few components that go on the motherboard, and they all have their own way of installing. But there's no need to get overwhelmed. Every component is going to come with its own instructions that are pretty clear and easy to understand. If not, there's always guides online that you can follow to help you through the process as well. And one final note for these components, nothing on here is necessarily stuck on. If something breaks or you just want an upgrade, it's going to be super easy to just pop it out and put the new one in. And now that the motherboard is installed, we can see here that the girl has actually flipped over the PC to install the power supply unit. And we can see that the power supply unit actually has a giant fan on it because this is where all the energy is coming into the PC, so it's generating a lot of heat and we need to get that out. And now we're going to wire up the PC to connect the power to the motherboard. And there's definitely a lot of wires. Don't worry, keep calm. 
and just plug in the wires one at a time and it'll all work out. So here we can see the girl applying something pretty interesting to the CPU. Essay, can you tell us more about what she's doing here? So she's actually applying thermal paste and thermal paste is a heat transfer agent between components, okay? You do not need thermal paste for every PC build, but it is something that you can add for better heat conductivity. And in this case, since we want to prevent overheating, we have the thermal paste between the CPU and the cooler so it can take away the heat that is generated. Right, and speaking of CPU coolers, here we can see the fans of the cooler being installed and now we can see the pump being placed over the CPU. If you just had a regular CPU fan cooler, this is also where that would be placed. And the girl here has a pretty interesting pump. It has a programmable screen. Which brings us to the step that is probably the most fun in a PC build, personalization. There's a lot you can do to a PC to make it more unique and feel more your character. Nifty components like this really makes your PC stand out. So now we see both the guy and the girl installing the graphics processing unit. The graphics processing unit is a graphics card that deals with the PC's images, videos, and animations. The GPU of your device is so important, especially for gamers, mainly because it makes your game run more efficiently, makes them look better with high resolution graphics and improved frame rates. As you guys can see, there are a lot of wires in this process and a suggestion would be to use zip ties because you don't want your wires to be tangled and it would just give you an overall cleaner PC build. And going back to the earlier point of personalization, here we can see the guy has added RGBs on his PC, which are just lights that you can install to your build. And selecting a color scheme is a great way to make a PC truly unique to you, and a lot of builders do this because the colors really do stick out on a PC. And once we have everything connected, we can go ahead and turn on the power supply, and as you can see, our components are connected correctly, which is why we have a working PC. Right, and this is when we're going to connect our I.O., like our keyboard, mouse, and monitor, so that we can actually interact with the PC. And right now our PC is just a skeleton, it has no software, so we're also going to want to choose an OS, like Windows or Linux, and also install a BIOS. And after that, now it's basically a usable PC. You can install the rest of your games and browsers and start doing whatever you want with the computer. And here we can see the girl has chosen to program her CPU cooler with the logo of the YouTube series that AMD hosts on their channel. Well, you think we covered everything, SA? I think we did, but let me go ahead and give a brief summary of the components that we talked about today. So we talked about the graphics processing unit, also known as the GPU. We talked about the central processing unit, also known as the CPU. Talked about the power supply, the RAM chips, SSD cards, HDD cards, as well as fans. All of these components come together to make a working PC. Great summary essay. And I know there's a lot on the screen right now, and maybe you think there's a lot to think about, but in the end you can chunk it up to a finite amount of parts, and you're going to want to look for the certain specs that you want for your PC build that's currently available on the market. It might take some time to figure it out, but it'll be well worth it in the end. So we hope we got you guys thinking about building your own PC in the future. It's a really fun project to do, especially if you like to personalize your themes, if you like the idea of getting more bang for your buck, or you just want to learn more about technology in general. Oh, and another thing to note is that building your own PC is typically a lot cheaper than buying a pre-built one. Yes, I definitely agree with you, Melissa. I hope we have been able to convince you guys to either build a PC just for a personal project or just to get the experience because you won't regret it as it is a lot of fun. We want to say a big thank you to UT Girl Day for having AMD and thanks to you guys for attending the AMD booth. Have a good day.